What are the best, weirdest life hacks? Fingering is not an in and out motion. You're not simulating a wiener with your finger. Insert, press up into the bumpy surface on the roof of the cavern and drag out while maintaining pressure. For normal people, it can be thought of as a come hither motion. For Reddit nerds, think using a mouse scroll wheel, only upside down. If you can't reach something on a high shelf at the office, just stand on a rolling chair. Women want guys to be present while doing it. Make noise. Let her know you're enjoying her body. You don't have to jackhammer her to turn her on. Just show her passion and excitement. Women are more turned on by the experience than the jackhammer. Catch up on sleep by not going into work. It's a life hack that is not suitable for working. If you keep firm pressure on the bean after climaxing, there's a percentage of women that will have one or a series of smaller yet very enjoyable climaxes from that pressure. Don't rub, just gentle pressure. Edit, thank you for my very first award. I'm thrilled my most upvoted comment is for a tip on extending climaxing, and I hope you are successful in trying it out either by yourself or with a partner. The underneath slash sides of the melons are more sensitive than the top of them and the cleavage. Cold water gets splooge off skin much better than hot water. Thinking of receiving it in the butt in a few minutes and washing up beforehand? Wetter is not better. If you use too much water and it gets into your colon, it's coming back out in a few minutes with force. Stop when you just start to feel pressure. Guys, don't be afraid to be loud when you're finishing. Loud and obvious. It's unbelievably hot when you don't hold back. Farts will come out quicker and smoother if you're laying on your left side. Has to do with how your bowels are situated. This is a godsend in bed at night during the two days leading up to my period. Ask your partner what they like or don't like, or always wanted to try. Hygiene. Trim your fingernails. Long nails hurt. Also, if you know in advance you're getting lucky, but haven't showered the entire day, take one. It's okay to laugh while doing it. Having fun makes you more relaxed and playful. Always pee after doing it. Both genders. Reduces the risks of UTIs. Keep your hand around the small of her back and make sure her bean is rubbing against your pelvic bone. Edit. Or if the position doesn't cater to this, get a vibrating bullet toy and use it slash have her use it. For fellow men, while bathing, wash your butt crack with shampoo. Your bum hairs will be super soft and conditioned. Women compliment me on this all the time now. If you're on your way down to perform oral on a chick and realize too late that the smell is going to kill you, but you've already committed and backing out is going to be a problem, all isn't lost. Spread your fingers wide like you're throwing a peace sign to a hippie, slide your thumb into the area, and press your palm firmly over it, sealing the unpleasant odor in. Now you can lick it between your peace sign fingers with no odor. If you're a dude and you have an exceptionally splashy poo, give your balls a quick once-over with some toilet paper. That splashback can get on your undercarriage and you may not notice. Balls are stinky enough. Water by the bed, or adjacent to wherever you're doing it, minimizes reducing the mood, while keeping you hydrated and hopefully cramp-free in those long bouts. If you're going to nut in the shower, use cold water. If you use hot water, it cooks and gets coagulated and sticks to everything. Bing Video is great for looking for premium videos that have been uploaded elsewhere. Just remember to turn off Safe Search. Edit, I don't work for Bing, I promise. Speed does not equal pleasure. Start slow and methodical and slowly go faster. Don't just rely on your wiener either. Whisper in her ear, kiss her neck, kiss from her neck to down below, and once you get down there, really give it to her and tell her how much you love her body and how good she makes you feel, or bad if that's what you're into. Also, when eating out, don't just lick. Curl your tongue and do little circles. When licking, put one hand on her mons pubis area and gently press upward to pull her skin and other stuff tight. This exposes the most sensitive area and adds to the sensitivity. My ex did this all the time, until I caught on and made it part of our thing. Current partner approves. Edit, it has been brought to my attention that I made a typo. Indeed, it should be mom's pubis. Current partner approves. If your partner finishes in you, pin him down and drag your goopy area across their bare back to assert dominance and to moisturize. Edit, ooh, it seems that some gold finally made it into my grubby little hands. Remove the guards from the grinders so you can grind in all positions. 
If you just weld a tack, put your hand over it so you don't have to put on your welding hoods. If you don't have gloves, you can do a safety squint. Edit, thanks for the silver. Stay safe out there. Those are just things I see people do. I keep my guard on and use my PPE all the time. The real death grip that guys experience is psychological. A lot of guys, especially those who are relatively new to doing it, struggle to get off due to stage fright. They're not used to playing co-op or performing under pressure. While doing it on your own is about self-pleasure, doing it together is about pleasuring your partner and being rewarded for it. I've recommended to inexperienced friends to start off doing it to yourself together so that they get used to busting a nut while there's another active participant. It usually does the trick. Give your SO a foot massage after doing it if you want to give them a real treat. Your pleasure centers are all warmed up and it's practically as good as the doing it itself, but lasts as long as you want it to. Get her off before you even start. Make sure she finishes, and finishes good at that, before your dong goes anywhere near that. Why? Well, for one, if she gets off every time, she's going to enjoy doing it with you more and will want to have it more, so that's a win for you. But more importantly, as a life hack, the difference between how it feels for you is night and day when she's 100% revved up. Doing it after she's gotten off, compared to when she's just got horns on her head, is like comparing a Thanksgiving feast to a PB&J sandwich. They'll both do the job, but the turkey and stuffing is so much better. Forget putting a towel on the bed. Use a wrestling mat for doing it. Wrestling mats are specifically built to handle two sweaty people grunting and pounding each other. The mats provide better support for doing it than a bed does, and they're definitely a lot easier to clean. Some tips. Make sure to clean the mat before and after every use. Don't get a red mat, otherwise it may be difficult to see what to clean if you're into blood play or doing it while she's on her periods. Lubricant will make some mats very slippery, so I wouldn't recommend trying to stand on the mat after you've done the diddly-do. You'll want to crawl or roll off and wipe your feet carefully. To be extra cautious, look up jujitsu videos for instructions on how to protect yourself while falling. Speaking of lube, you'll want to apply a little bit to the mat to avoid mat burn. Unless you really want to go wild, a practice mat would suffice. Exercise mats work too. Edit 1. Bonus tip. You can outfit the wrestling mat with bondage restraints if you're feeling kinky. Edit 2. I added a more affordable example after seeing some gawk at the price of the mat I initially linked. I forgot that not everyone wants to go all in right away. Whoopsies. Explain to your partner ahead of time that when you're super excited, you occasionally let a fart slip out. Then reassure them that it doesn't happen that often, only once or twice ever. Then, you can rip it whenever you want and they won't get mad because they'll think they're the world's greatest lover. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of this video and have a wonderful day. Before an exam, get hard and write a bunch of notes on your dong. Then, when you need to cheat, whap it out and get it hard. Plus, if you let girls know what you're doing, they'll probably ask to see it, so you'll be killing two flies with one shot. If you want more sound from your partner while doing it, you can take advantage of different products and apply them to their sensitive areas. I myself have found great success with the application of Tabasco and pepper oils. When with girls, involve yourself with your partner. Don't get pressured by your own mind into overthinking what they want. For example, I remember the first time I ever used my fingers on my now ex-girlfriend. She told me I look really bored when I did it. That stuck with me, and I realized I was sacrificing my own pleasure by thinking exclusively of my partner and not of both of us, which in turn was making me less involved and making the experience war for both of us. Learn techniques if you like, but best to just relax and communicate clearly. With guys, less experienced, took a while to think of some good advice. Responding to their needs is key, but these needs may be strong and overwhelming. It's always okay and often helpful to slow down, pause, and try to gain balance over what they like slash you like and to what intensity, maybe even beforehand and separate from the act, work out your compatibility. Source, bisexual. I think one of the most attractive things a partner has ever done for me is wash their hands deliberately before using their fingers. Sounds silly, but fingers can be gross and I'm prone to infections. It was just a really respectful gesture. Gold Bond Body Powder on Your Balls. It'll help with them sticking to your legs and keep them feeling fresh longer. Also, they're really soft and smooth afterwards. If you do this, though, make sure your balls are sufficiently dry or the cooling sensation from the powder may be a little too intense for you. Otherwise, there's really no downsides to this in my opinion.
If you can't seem to finish during oral, try getting up into a position where you can thrust your hips. Naturally, this can lead to gagging, so have her prop herself up on elbows facing the edge of the bed. You stand facing her. She adjusts so that when your thighs hit the mattress, you have bottomed out and can't penetrate any deeper than that. Hiccups can be cured by stimulating the vagus nerve. One doctor found the most reliable form of vagus nerve stimulation for stopping hiccups is digital rectal massage. Not into butt stuff? Climaxing can also work. I don't know that I've ever seen this one mentioned before, so here you go. Guys, if you feel directly above your junk, you'll notice there's a fleshy V-shaped structure there. When she wants you to go harder, angle your hips to hit her bean with that. That's the sensation she's usually after. Plus, you don't have to worry about accidentally ramming her cervix, a very unpleasant sensation from what I've observed. If you're behind her, time your thrusts so your balls swing forward for the same effect. As a corollary, lightly tap her sensitive area during foreplay, and it can be a new and surprisingly stimulating experience for her. Your miles may vary. Edit, it's important to note that the most important thing you can do in the bedroom is to pay attention and read your partner to see if she enjoys what you're doing with this and with any other technique. When in doubt, just ask. A woman's body has pain receptors spread out over their whole body. They have twice as many as men too. These receptors also register pleasure. A sensual massage might make you calm down, mate, but do it right to a woman, that's her version of foreplay. Don't be so focused on just the private parts that you forget the rest of the body, especially the legs, the back, the shoulders, and even the stomach. This is more advice than life hack. As for a life hack, this is for you guys, but it works for you too, ladies. On your first time with someone, it's all right to ask what they want. Just word it correctly, like, what do I need to do to make you feel good, as an example. It's simple, but it's all about what you can do for someone else. It's all right to ask for help in making someone else feel good. No one will take it bad, only if you keep asking. It's all about you taking an interest in them and their pleasure. Don't be afraid to ask your partner to wash themselves before doing it. It's a better experience when everyone is clean. Goes without saying. Do not be offended when someone asks you to wash yourself. Don't say, I showered this morning, or something along those lines. Just do it. Erring on the side of proper hygiene is a win-win for everyone. When doing the come-hither motion, use your fingertips, or more accurately, the pads of your fingers, not the tip where the nail is, and try to avoid the edges of your nails, obviously. Additionally, if you're going to put your fingers in someone, keep your hands and nail beds clean and keep the nails trimmed and filed. If you're unsure if your nails will scratch her, run your finger and nail around the inside of your cheek to check for problem areas. Click on one of the videos you see on the screen now or a Karen will sue you.